One of the important reasons to go back to Douglas today, uh, in this part of the 21st century, <laughs> especially given what we lived through in our political lives so for, let's say, the last five to seven or eight years, is that Douglas is back there in the 19th century analyzing what does this idea of America mean? What is this thing, this American experiment? What was its central hypocrisy and its central contradiction? And then what was its promise? That speech by Douglas, he delivered in 1852 in Rochester, New York, is called What to the Slave is the Fourth of July, is now widely publicly read uh, on the Fourth of July in communities all over the country because people have found in it both a critique of America that came out of that context, but also a remarkable expression of the promise of America. Of, of America's creeds, if they're lived up to. Turns out Douglas loved the Declaration of Independence. He loved the principles. He hated the practices, at least before the Civil War. Well, the two great pieces of significance about that speech. One is that it's a rhetorical masterpiece. I mean, it is a masterpiece of oratory. In every element of technique you can imagine. Secondly, it is as embittered and poignant, and yet in the end uplifting, criticism of American political hypocrisy, as you will ever read. And the importance there is the date. It's 1852. It's two years after the Fugitive Slave Act. It's an election year in the country. Uncle Tom's Cabin has just been published and is being read all over the North and the South. And Douglas takes to a platform in his own hometown and delivers this barn burner. It's about a 25 page text. Barn burner of a speech where he drags his audience through a litany of all the horrors of what slavery had done to people and to this country. At the same time, in the beginning of it, he honors the Founding Fathers for creating this idea, this glorious idea of, an, of this America. He even calls the Fourth of July the American Passover. And then at the end of the speech, the short ending of it, he lifts them back up and he says, it's not quite too late. Your country is malleable. It can still be changed if you do it. That's eight years before secession, nine years before the Civil War. It sits there as one of the greatest warnings about who we are and who we can be and who we once were. From that speech for today's audiences who frequently reread it now on the 4th of July, is that we too are still part of that same story. Do we live up to these creeds? Uh, do we? you know, refurbish these creeds year in and year out, and election in and election out? It turns out, no, sometimes we don't. Sometimes maybe we do. And what is we? That speech has a lot to say about, are we a we at all if we don't follow these creeds? <laughs>